Well, good morning and thank you so much for joining us. We welcome you to the New Life Bible Church. We are located at 1420 Hope Loop Road in Fayetteville, North Carolina, where our pastors are Alan S. McLaughlin and First Lady Norma McLaughlin. We thank you so much for joining us this morning. We thank you and we pray that what you hear this morning will be an encouragement to you and that you will take it and let it allow God to use it in your life daily. So give us a minute and we'll be right back with you. Well, good to see you again. This morning, we're going to go right into our message. And the message is talking about love. Love. We're all looking for love in some form or another. We're all looking for it. God created a craving in us to love. And if he created it, then it is good. But I've been a little bit dis saddened and a little bit disturbed by what I've been seeing on the news. Not just the elections, but even the, the violence and, and the deep level of hatred. And, it, and, it, and it, it baffles me. It saddens me. And it shouldn't because, you know, it's Satan's domain and, and he is doing what he does best. And that's evil. But still, it saddens me. And so I begin to think if there is this deep level of hatred... Is there a level of love that is even deeper? Absolutely. There's four different kinds of love, and I'll be right back to share those with you. Well, thank you for coming back and joining me again. There are four different types of love that I want to share with you real quickly. The first one is Eros. Now, Eros is a romantic kind of love. It is a, a love for the body. It's a state of the heart and it is intimately related to sex. It's good and it is right, but usually it's not enough to sustain a relationship long-term in and of itself. And then the second one that we want to talk about is filial. That's a friendship kind of love. It's a love of the soul. It's, it's what you feel toward people that you like with the same interests, the same um, social graces, the same style. But filio is exclusive. It's natural. And it is conditional. And then you have that storge. That's the committed kind of love. But it's a familiar kind of love. It's a family love. It's dutiful. And it can be a hindrance sometimes. And it can actually pull you away from some things when it comes to family. And the last kind of love that I want to share with you is agape. Now, agape love, that's that parental love. That's ma that mature love. That's that sacrificial love. And the lexicon says it's so beautiful. I like the way the lexicon says it. It says, to take pleasure in the thing. Agape loves only at the cost of the bearer. Agape puts the beloved first. It sacrifices pride. It sacrifices self-interest. It sacrifices your possessions for the beloved. You see, that's the kind of love that God has for us. That's the kind of love that inspired him to sacrifice his son and then his son to obey and sacrifice himself on the cross. It's the kind of love that we're commanded to give one another. It's a love that is supreme. Obviously, all these loves work together, but only agape is free from error and is free from our humanity. You see, agape is the glue that holds all of these loves together. And it gives us wisdom and patience with all when all the others fail. First and foremost, agape love, I want to let you know, agape love is not predicated on a feeling, but it's predicated on a fact. That means that we're going to do a lot of things that we don't want to do. But we do it because it's the right thing to do. When Jesus died on the cross, before he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he asked his father to remove this cup from him three times. Remove it. Remove it. Let this cup pass. He said, not my will, but yours. You see, sometimes the thing that is right may be downright difficult. A wise person once told me, Nicole, sometimes you're going to have to do the right thing and let your emotions catch up later. This morning, I want to encourage you and I want to share with you the colors of love. God has shown us how much he loves us. If you were to look in the dictionary up the word love, you probably see a picture, picture of Christ right next to it. He is the definition of love. So we're going to go right into our message. It's called the colors of love. How he wants us to respond. Now, 
That's right. Did you get that? The colors of love and how God wants us to respond. Our text is going to be coming from 1 John chapter 4. We're going to begin at the 7th and go through the 12th verse. So I'm going to give you just a few seconds to go ahead and get your iPad, your Surface, or any digital, or even your Bible that you want to read along with us. Verse 7 says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever doesn't love God doesn't know God because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Verse 12 says, not only has no one ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. Two things I want to share with you real quickly that will hopefully change how we love. It will change our mentality of how we respond to others by using that perfect example, Jesus Christ himself. The first point that I want to share with you is coming out of 1 John 3 and 1. In 1 John 3 and 1, it reads, Oh, see what manner of love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and such we are. So my first point is, agape love is sovereignly lavished on us. Learn how to lavish it on others. We're invited in the scripture to consider what manner of love that the Father has bestowed upon us. God is love. And God is light. One divine attribute illustrates the other. Lavish comes from a French, an old French word that refers to rain. So every time you think of the word lavish, I want you to think of how that it showers down on you, the love that he's showering down on us. Now, if he's showering down love on us, it's now our turn to start showering and showing and lavishing love on others. It's so hard, you know, how hard is it to, to rain some love down on someone? Not because of what they've done, not because, you know, they like you, but just because he loved you first. When was the last time you showered some praise on somebody? When was the last time you encouraged someone? I mean, from the heart and you meant it. One thing that I've learned that anything that you're trying to develop takes some time to evolve. I remember years ago when I used to travel from Nashville, Tennessee to Fayetteville, North Carolina, my sister used to cook lasagna and she would make lasagna and then for dessert, she would make banana pudding. And I had was determined in my mind, I'm going to learn how to make this lasagna. So I went home, she gave me the ingredients, she gave me the instructions, but I messed it up. I, it was all kind of runny. My kids said it tasted bland and they begged me not to ever make it again. But I was determined. I want some lasagna that tastes like that. And I tried and over and over and over. And before you know it, I begin to make it. And my kids now actually ask for it, even at their age now. And because now I, I know how to do it now, because over time, I learned how to do it. We have to allow love to develop. We have to give people time to develop. Have you ever known someone who used to be harsh over time and, you know, they used to do this and that back in the day, um, but they're not the same person anymore. You know, it was nothing for them to, to pull out a knife and cut someone. It was nothing for, for the other person to, to, to cuss you out or anything. But it now there, it's been replaced with some humility and some patience and their character has changed because it has developed over time. But we want to develop to a point where we're not afraid to encourage one another. We're not afraid to show love because we're worried about what they're going to think or what they're going to say. As Jesus was announcing his departure to his disciples, he left us with a command. And he said in John 13, 34 and 35, he said, love one another, even as I have loved you. By this, they will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Pass a light through a prism. 
and you come up with seven colors. Seven colors. If you pass light through a storm, you come up with a rainbow. Those are the seven colors. The seven colors of the spectrum, if you put them in motion, they merge into one, and we call that the color of light. Just as there's seven colors that make up light, so there are nine elements that are composed of love. You have patience, you have kindness, you have generosity, you have humility, you have courtesy, you have unselfishness, you have a good temper, guilelessness, and serenity. So if you take those nine components of love and you put them in motion, they all merge into the essence of what God is. And he is love. God is love. This is not just an attribute. It is the ultimate face of his very being. He showers down. He rains down love sovereignly on us all, calling us the children of God. Now it's your turn. We accept freely his love. But do we freely give that love to others looking for nothing in return? I'm not talking about to your best friends or people you know or people you like, your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. I'm talking about the seemingly unlovable people, your haters, those people who talk about you, those people who despitefully use you, you know, the ones you know that they don't, they don't like you. Do you shower down love on them? I like Luke and Matthew gives the same account in different ways. Um, he says, if you love the ones that love you, what credit is that to you? You know, you've not done anything great. There's no pressure. There's no friction. There's no confrontation. But then he goes on to say, for even sinners love those who love them. You've not done any great feat. You've not done anything anybody else would have done. But if you love the seemingly unlovable, expecting nothing in return, your reward is great. So my very first point, for that one is about love. When we have to learn about that agape love, love is lavished on us. Learn how to lavish it on others. And that brings me to my second and final point. I'll be back. Point number two, point number two, when responding to others, you be the initiator. Coming from 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, it simply says, we love because he first loved us. Simply put, God is love. How can we not love one another? I like the example that Beth Moore gives, and I want to read that right quick. And she simply says, I'm a woman. There's nothing that you can do to make me not be a woman because I'm a woman. So even if you're mean to me, even if you hit me, even if you call me names, no matter what you do and no matter what you say, I'm still a woman. There's nothing that you can do to affect my womanhood because I'm a woman. Well, it's the same thing with God. There's nothing that we can do to affect the love of God because he's love. It is who he is. You can't do anything to him to make him less because as surely as I'm a woman, he is love. He cannot love less. He would have to be less God. He'd have to be less love. He can't change who he is. He's immutable. He changes not. Just let me do an example for you right quick. I have a prism here. It was given to me, and I'm holding on to it. But let's just say I don't have it. My hands are empty. So... In order for me to have it, you have got to give it to me first. So you're in possession of it, not me. So if you were to ask me for it, I can't give it to you because I don't have it. So why would you continue to ask me for something that I don't have the ability to give? Some people haven't developed that love yet. And we expect them to give it to us. And we get upset with them. We get mad at them because they're not doing what we feel like they should be doing. When at the end of the day, they don't have the ability to give it to you. And they're probably giving you all they got. 
So let's stop asking and not get upset with them or talk about them. Let's pray for them and ask God to give them, give it to them or allow what God has given them to manifest in them. You see, I'm going to recognize the source from which it came. He loved me first. Our ability to love us, we don't have that. Because it's a divine thing to love the divine. But at the end of the day, the only reason that we can love God, the only reason we can love God is because he loved us first. It's the same way with our brothers and sisters. They don't have to give us anything. They don't have to do anything for us. They don't have to do something first and then we give it to them because, you know, they gave it to us. We've been given a lot and we cannot, we cannot compare anything that exists on the face of this earth to the love of God. God didn't create a man or a woman on the face of this earth that can give us what he is able to give us. You see, we don't come up with this love. We don't just say, okay, Lord, I love you. I love you so much. Out of the blue, every time we think about how much we love God, we got to know he's the initiator. He is the example of how we should initiate love. He's that example. He's the source of all things. There's an experiment that I want you to do quickly. And if you come to the 10 o'clock parking lot service, you'll get a prism. But I want what I want you to do is I want you to take it home and or at home, I want you to get a prism. You can get a big diamond. This is probably a 50 million carat gold diamond. I want you to take a light. And I thought I had a light here. I want you to take a light on your phone or a flashlight and I want you to shine through the light. I want you to shine down on a white piece of paper and I want you to watch the colors. I want you to watch the colors of the rainbow. Watch the colors of light. We call it Roy G. Bev and those are the different colors. And what I want you to do, if you come to the 10 o'clock parking lot service, you're actually going to get quite a few of them. But what I want you to do at home or whether you come to the parking lot service I want you, every time you look at this, I want you to think of the nine elements that make up the love of God. That is who he is. So every time you look at it, be mindful of how much he has lavished on us. Our job is to lavish it on others. Be mindful that it doesn't matter who has done what, but our job is to be the initiator. Initiate it first. I pray that you've gotten something out of this. I pray that we learn how to respond when it comes to the colors of love. Have an amazing day.